Hi, Ethan. Uh, um, I'm trying to think of like, I don't know what the formula is. Hey, guess who we got to sit down with this week? That's right, Kyle Marshall. Kyle Marshall, the supervising producer from The Loud House. It's one of Nickelodeon's most successful shows, and I met, first met Kyle many, many years ago when I was working in Paris on a co-production called Atomic Puppet. And Kyle was the uh, director for Mercury Filmworks. It was an incredibly interesting process making that show and meeting Kyle for the first time. He was really kind enough to share a lot of his experience with our creative team in Paris and our co-director, Khalil Benami. So I took a moment with him uh, in a very noisy restaurant to just talk to him a little bit about, you know, his process and some of the ways he sets up and pays off gags in the shows that he makes. I think it's really interesting. It's quite a narrow discussion that goes quite deep, quite fast. So tell us what you think. I thought it was really interesting. And I'm certainly going to try some of the stuff he was talking about next time I'm working on a show. Thanks very much. Bye. Hi, I'm Kyle Marshall, and uh, I'm currently supervising producer on Loud House. Woo! Woo! And uh, originally from Canada. Worked there in Canada for about 10, 11 years, and then moved out here about four years ago. Uh, I think early on in school, there they always taught us that boards. Like that's your, that's the blueprint of the whole show. Right. And so you have to have your full vision down on every panel. Right. Because if you don't, because it, it's going to, it, especially if you're working on a co-production, even if you're working and you know, the people are 10 seats away from you, yeah. no one knows what's inside your head. And so we work in a visual medium where we're throwing something on the screen for all these people to try and understand what's in our head. Yeah. You know, all the kids at home watching it or whatever. And so, just every panel, have your vision down. Right. Because if you're confused about, if you can't answer anything on a panel, then it's confusing to everybody else. No one, no one's going to get it, right? So my big thing was like, you've got, always got to have, have your full vision down. Yeah, I mean, so like, in, so the, on the technical side of it, yeah, like the boards, like make sure, I like to have everything in there. So like, my background, my... Make right. sure that everything's working properly that way. Right. Your joke, when you're setting up a joke, like make sure that the setup, the timing, I like to have the timing in the board so you can kind of, yeah, you don't have to, you don't have to animate the board, right. but you put as much, you can put a little timing in how you pose something, yeah. and that's going to be, so then when you get that back from the editor, they kind of saw your vision too, and they can already put that timing in there without right. you having to sit down with them. Yeah, I know that happens too, where like all of a sudden they feel that, Everything needs to be drawn a lot, yeah, and right. then it takes away from the joke. Right, right, right. right. You know, like old yeah. Chuck Jones, like Shasta McNasty, where like the whole body just moves, or it doesn't move, and then the legs just move. It's so of funny. It's such a great joke. Yeah. And like just things like that, like you just emphasize the thing that's most important yeah. in the story. You know, if like if I'm a cat and I'm gonna claw you to death, and I go like this, and then all of a sudden my claws pop out. Yeah. Like if I go like this and then I'm moving around, well that's gonna take the focus off those claws. And then it's not going to be a good joke. Yeah, I'm, and so you didn't set up, okay, I'm setting something up, and then here it is, and then, you know. Uh, well, it's just like the basic, like you're setting up a joke. I, I guess the biggest thing is just uh, there's no bad stories and there's no bad jokes. Right. It's just how you set it up. Okay. Like if you, can, if you can set up a joke properly, um, and you give it time, you know, it might not be the funniest joke in the world, but it can, it can read. Right. And it's a funny little right. thing, right? But, uh, like, I've worked on a show before where it's like they try to fit in a joke every, you know, every 30 seconds, or, or sorry, like, you know, 15 jokes in 30 seconds. Right, okay. And so it's just a bang, 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 you're just pounding through these jokes, but none of them ever had time to breathe or any time to set up kind of thing. Um, so Yeah, yeah, the time is huge. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you need time to kind of set it up. Then you need a little time to breathe. 
I don't have the formula so much for how to like make it because every joke is so different. Right. Some jokes it's just a simple setup, and then there's some jokes like you have a guy like uh, Norm Macdonald, who the whole joke is that he's going to sit you through three minutes of a massive setup to give you no punchline. Right. Okay. Yeah. Like that's yeah, a whole yeah, different yeah, yeah. joke. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, but yeah. then there's some jokes yeah. that it's just like the idea is. Um, you know, you just gotta have a quick setup, and I'm trying to think of a, a quick one where you just you have a funny little setup where you're leading the audience some way, and then you have the the turn, the switch, yeah. the, the misdirection, yeah. and then hey, it's this other. Oh, totally. So you have yeah, you just have this great setup where you just keep building the setup, leaving you thinking more and more. Okay, just give it to me, and then you hit them with the misdirection. Yeah, that's a great joke. Yeah, and then and then there's other ways too. Where like, it, it's always to me, it's always like in the setup. That's what kind of leads you to this this joke, unless it's something that just comes out of nowhere. Um, I'm trying to think of one in Loud House where, yeah, it's like a callback, like a really good callback. Right, 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 right. Is like, it's just a massive setup. It's a runner throated episode, right? So we have this one in Loud House where this character keeps whistling, and every time they whistle, it brings like a. A, you know, a, a flock of birds chasing them, and that's not what they're trying to do with the whistling. Okay. And then, so we built this thing up, and then we kind of forget about it for a while. And then they have this really emotional moment. This character that whistles, and this other character. And you know, the one character is in a vehicle, and they're saying this line, and they're, they're getting really emotional. And then at the end, they do this whistle together. And then right then, a bird comes out of nowhere, and she rolls out the window quick, and the you know, bird basically dies, and because it smokes <laughs> the window. And like, it's fun. Like if oh that just came God. out of nowhere without the setup. Yeah. It wouldn't work, but we constantly build up slowly this idea of this callback, and then finally you hit them with the biggest punchline of like the bird basically dies because these birds keep coming out of nowhere oh whenever this character whistles. But like that idea of like you know, like, to me it's always in the setup. You can have a really good setup. That's why I think I like I'm I think I'm more suited for that. Where like some people are really good at just subtle weird humor that are gonna make you. Laugh with the with the way they draw, you know, like um, like I watch Apple and Onion, and just the way that they dance is funny. Right. There's no setup to that. Yeah. It's just funny drawings. Yeah. Okay. And some okay, people yeah, can yeah. really do that. Yeah. Whereas like I, I come from more like hey, you set you build 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 build, and then you either give them the joke or you Norm Macdonald it. Oh yeah, totally. Especially like, and that can also then go to like. I told us, like the SpongeBob thing, they're like, you t that totally went random. You, yeah. you know, it's a setup, and all of a sudden you threw randomness in it. And it's really funny. Yeah. There's a lot of people that are like that, that just have a funny way of just drawing. Yeah, it just makes you laugh, just the way you know. And there isn't even a joke behind it. Favorite cartoon right now? Yeah. Uh, one of my favorites. I watch this one like over and over again. Is uh, King Star King? It's this Adult Swim. There's only I think there's only six. I only know of I think six episodes. And uh, so I watched it when it first came out, and then after a year, I'm like, oh, I need to watch it again. It's insane. It's insanity. Okay. Uh, what else uh, was I really watching lately? Actually, a lot of stuff I watch. I watch it to study it, to see like different. Like for example, like Pinky Malinky just came out. And it's completely different than the show I'm working on. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I want to watch this to see, like, it's a really funny show. And I had a lot of friends that worked on it back in Canada, Jamfield, yeah. and they loved it. And so it's like, okay, what? It, it's a whole different style of joke telling, different stories and stuff. It's really funny, and it's just, it's just a different sense of humor than what I've been used to working on the last few years. Yeah, and so it's like, sometimes I find that you can kind of get into like a groove of like just this one thing. Yeah. So you want to balance to something else and just. Uh, Spider-Man was amazing. Hilda was cool because uh, Hilda's like a whole different pace than what I'm used to. Yeah. And so it was really cool that I, I think they they really did something different on that. Um, what else? And it's like there's a few that I hang out with that do, and like sometimes you want to come home and you want to get away from it. Sure. So you you want to watch your, your Breaking Bad or your Wire or something dark and gritty, or maybe you want to watch Big Brother. I don't know, but 
I like to sit down and watch the new stuff that's coming out, or also look at old stuff. That it's like, hey, what? Like, it's pretty fun to watch some older cartoons, remember what it is that, that why I like what I'm doing. I think it's good. I don't know. It's like, uh, you, so many people don't watch it. And they're, they're like, I don't even care to. And it's like, well, you work in this industry, aren't you? Yeah, it's like ragging on Passionate about it? Yeah. Like, um, it is a bit odd. I think it's good. Like, you know when, like, I don't know. Like, you can tell the hockey players that are passionate about hockey because they'll come home after a game and they want to watch, they want to watch other games. So like, you want to study what the other people are doing. Right, totally. You want to like, oh, if you're doing something like that, that's really cool. Yeah. How, how, how can I get in? Uh, Instagram. Email, Instagram's yeah. good. Um, I gotta remember what my name is. <laughs> I was so stupid because I, I made this massive name and then I can't remember what the hell the name is. The name is, it'll come eventually when the internet kicks in, Kyle's Sandwiches and Ice Cream. Kyle's Sandwiches and Ice Cream. Most people can't even spell, spell sandwich properly. Why did I choose that one? <laughs>